I was born crooked. I was a C-section baby, and the oxygen apparatus did not work in the delivery room, so the doctor had to give me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to save my life. I suppose the time without oxygen caused the cerebral palsy brain damage. My whole left side was affected, smaller, weaker, crooked left arm and leg. When Evan, my youngest son at age five, asked me, Mama, are you handicapped? The query caught me a bit off guard, but I calmly answered, well, yes, I suppose I am. He accepted this fact, but then he thoughtfully added, but you're just a little bit handicapped, right? <laughs> so I feel fortunate that I'm just a little bit affected by CP, yet I am still always aware of my crooked self. So how ironic is life? When three and a half years ago, Casey, my middle son at age 20, had a horrendous accident, and now his left arm won't fully straighten, and he has lost mobility in his left side. He, like me, has become a bit crooked. Is not all love, especially mother-child love, somewhat crooked? Mothers travel a truly crooked road. We begin the journey with quintessential closeness, breastfeeding, and a connection that keeps us from sleeping through the night. We even convince ourselves that our children are safe and protected. Then God laughs and shoves the reality of the precariousness of parenthood in our faces. You think you are safe, ha. Huh? Here's an ear infection with 102 fever. How about an asthma attack or a drug-related hellish accident? Any time that tight mother-child bond is fractured, we start to curse the heavens. Why me? Our journey of love takes a sudden hairpin turn, or it hits a pothole, or a speed trap, or dense fog. The possibilities are endless. And since mothers have indomitable spirits and bear-like bravery and superhero strength, when it comes to our kids, we maneuver those high, highway dangers and we fight to keep our most pr precious ones protected. So surviving these inevitable pitfalls of motherly love tighten that mother-child closeness, no matter how old our child may be. Casey from birth has been my rough and tumble child. He was born so fast I couldn't get that epidural I so wanted. <laughs> and his face was bruised and smashed looking. At age two, he got stitches in his forehead. At four, staples in the back of his head. At seven, more stitches. At 13, a broken arm. And at 15, staples again. <laughs> Later came the drinking, pot smoking, speeding ticket, and DWI. The girlfriend drama and the pill problem followed. On November 30th, 2010, the whole teenage mess culminated around midnight when Casey fell 40 feet from a Mopac overpass. At 6 a.m. the next morning, a passing jogger found him on a grassy patch of ground. To this day, Casey does not remember everything that led up to his fall, except that he had taken over 20 Xanax. He shattered his pelvis. He broke every bone in his left arm, cracked seven ribs, and sustained severe internal injuries, including a collapsed lung and a section of his colon that had to be cut out. Miraculously, he had no head injuries. I spent countless hours in the hospital helping arrange Casey's eight-plus pillows around his many broken parts, watching several seasons of Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> as a distraction from the pain and the boredom, making special smoothies that his stomach would tolerate, learning about wound care, just pampering him like he was my bouncy baby boy. After six weeks in the hospital and 12 different surgeries, Casey came home in a body brace and with a partially open stomach wound. Today, Casey is fine and he's living on his own, but he's still my rough and tumble boy. 
that dark, twisted nightmare of his accident has somehow toughened our mother-son connection. I remember once walking into the hospital at 6 a.m. and Casey was sleeping with nuts and bolts sticking out of his arms and he opened his eyes and he smiled and he said it was wonderful when I arrived before he woke up. Those long hospital hours mixed with shared silences and sudden heart-to-heart -heart revelations have made us better understand each other. So when we accept life's crooked, rough side, as much as we tre treasure life's straight, smooth moments, then we more fully understand the mystery and the wonder of love, even when it's crooked. I do not resent or hate my or my own or my son's crookedness, nor do I need to fix it. From the allure of a crooked grin to the loveliness of a crooked curl, I embrace my crooked love. <laughs>